Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Rubik, as you said. And for the past decade or so, I've been uh, following eSports. Uh, and we'll just jump right into that on what that is. Okay, so what is eSports? eSports is competitive video gaming. Um, now, for this study, uh, I specified the definition to include professional streaming. This is where professional video game players stream their play live online so other people can watch them. Uh, professional tournaments, this is where professional teams or individual players to uh, come together in tournaments and compete officially to be the best. Uh, casual tournaments, this is where uh, participants in the esports community come together casually and play together um, competitively. And competitive individual and team play, um, esports games generally have a ranked play or something along that lines where you can climb a ladder and uh, try to be the best. Now, I'm focusing mainly on participation in esports for, for this study and uh, why people participate. So every year, millions of people participate in esports. Um, since about 2010, there's been a large growth, but they've been around since 2001. Um, it's been growing every year, um, just for some statistics. Like the most popular game gets probably 36 million um, unique viewers, uh, and then overall, the tournament probably gets 300 million. Um, cumulative years over like the couple weeks that it airs. So in order to facilitate growth, it's important to understand why people participate, what draws them to it, which leads us to our research questions. Why do people participate in esports? Uh, more specifically, what needs does esports satisfy? And are there patterns among esports participants, maybe uh, differences among kind of engagements, and then age and gender was also collected and analyzed to see if there were any differences. But um, not many. Uh, there wasn't much variety in the age and gender category. Most of the respondents were um, 18 to 25 year old males. So that leads us to my hypothesis that esports fulfills a combination of achievement and social needs in participants. Uh, this is why people participate in that achievement needs includes um, competition, self-improvement, things along those lines. And uh, social needs include social integration, communication with others, and uh, things along those lines. There were probably about eight different variables in each category. I won't go into each of them because then we'll be here all day. Um, the hypothesis too was high engagement participants will focus more on uh, achievement needs, while low engagement participants will focus on social needs. And the final um, hypothesis was that uh, people who use these boards get it through the internet and they only want it through the internet, they don't want it through anyone else. This is because the internet offers a lot more than other mediums do, especially in the uh, social category. Uh, you can talk to other players while you're watching. You can watch a view count and see how many other people are, people are watching it with you. Um, so you get the feeling that you're all in it together. So to test these hypotheses, I made a survey and distributed it online. If you're going to uh, take a survey of the esports population, you're going to do it online. Um, the specific websites that I used were uh, reddit.com. I used multiple subreddits on there um, based on esports and video gaming. I also used Facebook and social media, and I also used esports forums. And then uh, the survey consisted of multiple choice questions and Likert scale questions uh, pertaining to why people participate, where do you went over the social and achievement, but uh, I also included engagement factors as well to add another layer. Uh, this included uh, ranking yourself just broadly about how you feel you're engaged in esports and how often you participate in hours um, per week. So the results, here's just the first hypothesis again, which leads us to uh, the results of the data. This is just one table. There are many more tables that look almost exactly like it. Uh, it's um, <clears throat> a sample of people who rank their engagement in esports moderately high. And as you can see, it's very heavily weighted over to the right. That means that these people um, all uh, admitted to having and identified with a sense of achievement uh, whenever participating in esports and whenever climbing and rank ladders. Um, now, this is just one variable. There were seven other variables with tables almost identical to this, um, but less of a correlation uh, towards the, as you can see, not many people identified as not engaged in esports. If they were, they wouldn't fill out the survey. Uh, so it's shown across the board for the achievement, and it's also shown across the board for social. If you look at these graphs, they all basically look the same. Uh, that's not a coincidence. Uh, generally, these factors are rated very highly. Uh, and for social aspects as well, uh, all the tables look like this. And uh, like the chi-square tests all show significant uh, correlations. 
Well, what did surprise me though was that whenever you think of sports teams, you think of the, you think of the city that they're from. This isn't the case with esports. Um, the participants identified that whenever they were supporting a team, they were very mixed results on whether or not they support teams from their own geographic areas, such as North America or Asia. Uh, it seemed to cross those borders transcend. So for hypothesis two, um, that high engagement participants will focus more on achievement needs and uh, low engagement will focus on social needs, it's unclear. There weren't enough respondents who identified as a one or two on the low engagement scale. There were only 57 out of um, 750 respondents. Uh, achievements seem to be more si significant overall, but that may have to deal with hypothesis as well, um, since most people identified as higher engagement. Um, but uh, can't make any conclusions based on the low engagement responses. So hypothesis three, people prefer to use the internet over other media for esports. As you can see, um, people who agree with that statement are about 75% of respondents, which is roughly 500 some. And then this is just uh, an example of the chi square table. As you can see on the, in the right column, there are zeros in all those columns. That's the probability that um, these results were due to chance. It's only rounded to three decimal places. There will be a number eventually on there because the probability won't be zero, but it's very unlikely that uh, it's due to chance. This is just the table showing the uh, results. Uh, people who prefer to spectate over the internet are definitely more engaged. The uh, more engaged players over and uh, participants on the left uh, or aren't seen on the left. The more engaged you are, the more you want to use the internet. So conclusions, just to wrap things up. Esports, uh, the first hypothesis is shown to be true by the data. Um, second hypothesis, no assumptions can be made on that uh, based on the low engagement responses. And participants prefer to use the internet. The data also says this to be true. There are some limitations to the study. Likert scale questions are subjective. What may be a five to me, may be a three to you. Um, the esports population is very large. 750 may not represent the whole especially since the demographic wasn't very broad. Uh, most uh, respondents were males 18 to 25 years old. For future research, it may be a good idea to look into the lifespan of esports games. Um, if you take a look at um, other sports like baseball or something, they've been around for a very long time. This will not be the case for individual games within esports. Uh, they'll go obsolete much quicker. So maybe predict like a 10, 20 year lifespan. Uh, how will esports go in mobile games? Some mobile games are trying to get into this area. And virtual reality, uh, it's a brand new topic. It would be very good to uh, figure out how esports will interact with that. And this is just a summary of what I've indicated. Does anyone have any questions? Was the chi square the only analysis that you ran that was specifically significant? Uh, there were a couple <laughs> more I didn't uh, include in the presentation that would be in my paper. You mentioned virtual reality. This are esports primarily handheld gaming, or are uh, they actually doing some of the? Generally, it's handheld or like keyboard. So very little of it's actually somewhat That's, like Wii Sports yeah, or no, it's some of that. the sensor-driven actual doing the yeah. tasks. It's more focused on the E than the sports part. <clears throat> How did you specifically measure engagement again? Um, just there were a couple questions on it, like. Um, hours you participate in esports per week. This would include spectating games, um, playing yourself, and like improving your own play. Uh, there was another one. It was uh, broadly just like identify your own engagement, scale one to five. Okay. Okay, thank you.